Hey guys, good, good Thursday. Uh, guys were engaged and focused. It was good, uh, good work day for us. Obviously excited about this one. You guys have heard me talk about uh, finishing here during the course of the week, something we've talked to, to the football team uh, uh, about a lot here, and uh, in particular this week, and, and uh, finish our preparation. Uh, you know, finish this football game, finish the, the season the right way. And, and uh, so looking forward to going and competing on Saturday with these guys. Can't wait to see the environment inside uh, of Neyland and, and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there. Let's start with Austin. We'll go with the, the obligatory injury question. Uh, any of them tie on Javante and any of those guys that were kind of nicked up? Yeah, I mean, you guys know that uh, on Fridays, usually uh, when we when we make those those final decisions, um, Beasley's continued to, to get better. Uh, we'll, we'll see where he's at tomorrow. Um, Tyon uh, wasn't able to, to do much today. Uh, probably uh, won't be able to, to go tomorrow. Uh, Javante continues to get better through the week. So, but we all, we usually make all those decisions on on uh, on Friday. You guys have had your first five on the offensive line for a couple of games now. How do you evaluate how they've done some specifics? If you could mention. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, the glaring thing for us as an offense, if you just look at, at uh, statistically uh, where we're at and, and who we've been, uh, I think our pass pro is something that we have to continue to improve on. Now everyone's going to think O-line right there uh, immediately as you say that, but it, it's really everybody. It's running backs in, included. It's quarterback. It, it's wide receivers uh, doing the right thing at the right time and, and getting open quickly. So. Um, <clears throat> I think pass protection we got to continue to clean up. Um, uh, obviously, we've played some um, some really good defenses that can get after the quarterback too. Um, but as a whole, as a group, you know, I, th I think you know when we got Coop back and everybody kind of falls into their natural position, um, we've been at, at our best with that group, and, and uh, you know expect them to play at a really high level on Saturday. Kind of a recruiting question. Some head coaches like to for their assistants to have regions in the recruiting. Others like <coughs> more position specific. How, how do you? How is the responsibility of giving up with your assistants? And is there overlap between positions and regions? Yeah, I think in, in today's world, uh, those two things ultimately end up blending uh, together. I, I think every job's different. Just you know proximity, location, where your recruiting base is, how much national you are, the more that you are, the more uh, position it, it becomes. Um, uh, for us, we do have areas, uh, primary and secondary areas for, for our coaches. At the same time, as, as you get through the recruiting process, the initial piece of, of, uh, of the evaluation or, or finding names and, and, uh, and seeing body types um, at one point in your recruiting process, it ultimately will end up getting into a, a position uh, specific as well. I think it's really important, though, that, that your entire staff uh, recruits guys too, um, from um, you know an area coach to a position coach to the unit, and then uh, ultimately uh, me as well. Josh, I know that most coaches are sort of loath to, you know, compare players or compare teams. This guy's like this guy, this team's like that team. But Mike Eckler said last night on law calls that this is as much probably the most fun he's ever had coaching the game. And, and I'm wondering, just on a daily basis, you walk into the building, does it feel sort of similar for you? How much are you, you know, enjoying kind of being around this group? Because you would think a five and five team might not be anyone's you know, favorite team ever, but it seems like y'all are having a good time. Yeah, I, I, you guys have heard me say that uh, I love competing with these guys on game day. That's true. Uh, absolutely do. They, they play extremely hard, um, but have come to really enjoy the group as a whole. And when I say that, I'm just talking about from where we started in February, who we were you know, as an individual, let alone uh, collectively as a group, the accountability, trust, and respect that we're going to have inside the building, how we've grown to be connected. Um, it's it's a ton of fun. We got a phenomenal group of young men inside of our locker room. They're doing things the right way. They care about each other and compete really hard. Uh, want to be great. They're very prideful, and we have a tremendous staff that um, you know is extremely selfless and, and just cares about the whole. And, and when you are around individuals like that, man, it's uh, it's it's a ton of fun because you're truly in a team setting and uh, love working with these guys, players and coaches alike. Eric and Brent. With the season still very much going on, two games left, how do you go about having those conversations with some seniors who may want to come back next year? Is it 
kind of whenever they want to talk about it, or are you trying to wait toward, towards the end of the season? Yeah, and you may have a, a brief conversation during the course of bye week to, to get a gauge of you know where they're at just mentally. But then I think you wait to the end of the year and then you present information. And you guys have heard me say it before. We want our players to have a chance and go chase their dreams at the next level. It's important that they understand what that process looks like, where they're at in their development, where uh, you know guys in the NFL see them, uh, you know potentially slated. Um, you know what are the rooms for improvement and, and coming back. What are their goals and aspirations and coming back? Is it time for them? Family dynamics. You present all that information, and, and uh, you know, and then you go from there. You want your kids to, your players to make a really well-informed decision, and, and uh, you want great amount of success for those guys. Coach, why has this been a fast start of the team? I, when it's <laughs> when we have started fast, and a, a lot of weeks we have, um, you know the. The group as a whole has been very focused, very locked in, and and, uh, and ready to go compete. Uh, I think the way that you know we start our practices and the energy that we try to have as soon as the kids come up the stairs into the meeting room, all parlay into uh, your group being ready to go compete um, when that opening kickoff happens. You know. When? <clears throat> Russ, I'm pretty sure just every year that, that you were at UCF anyways, you, this time of year, y'all were still kind of in the, the, the champ, conference championship mix. You are in the picture, you know, a lot more to play for in terms of that kind of stuff. Now, in the current situation, do you find it any more challenging to, to keep players motivated, to kind of keep them saying, hey, I know you're sore, but let's finish this thing. We can do some stuff. Yeah, everybody's sore and, and bang, banged up at this point in the year. I, I don't find it uh, hard to motivate this group. Um, <clears throat> We've lost some some games to some really good, really good teams. Um, our guys have shown up and competed in a, in a great way. You take a look at where we started the process week one to who we are now and how we prepare and how we compete. The consistency inside of our building because of our coaching staff, which has transcended and uh, <clears throat> been required of our, our team. We continue to grow and get better. And, and uh, you know this group. This group cares a lot, right? And have been through some tough things. And, and uh, man, I think they are, they understand that they are a part of, of growing. And, you know, it's a group that's starting to understand that, like, the end result matters, right? But I don't think that's what they're, they're truly focused on. They're, they're focused on their daily tasks, their process that, that you got to go through. And, and uh, that's why, you know, I, I feel like it's a group that's still extremely highly motivated and understands what we want to do here at the end of the season. Hey, Coach, a quick follow-up to Eric's question about having those conversations about guys returning. Have you had any players approach you about wanting to return yet? No, I mean, we'll, we'll have all those conversations um, as, as we finish up the season, you know, and, and uh, make sure that guys make the right decision for themselves. Brian? Josh, what kind of season has Darnell Wright had with all the injuries you mentioned up front? You know, he's, he's kind of been a steady hand there. He seems like he played pretty well up tackle. Yeah, for sure. Uh, highly, highly talented, right? And, and uh, has a great skill set. His best football is still in front of him, for sure. Um, a young man that I think, you know, just growing from the beginning of the season to, to now, and let alone in the off season has started to understand football and, and enjoys the, uh, the X's and O's and, and you know, a better general understanding of how the game's played from you know, alignments to assignments to uh, where his keys are. He's getting better fundamentally. There's a, a lot of room uh, for him in his growth, which is a real positive, uh, meaning that he's played at a high level but has a really high ceiling. <clears throat> Go back just a few years ago, and you're you're signing guys in February, and maybe some junior college guys. That's pretty much it. Now you've got the super seniors, COVID exemption year. You've got portal guys. You've got early recruiting and all that. What's that challenge like of just trying to count 85 guys or whatever it is? What's that like compared to a few years ago? Roster management uh, was never easy. Uh, you look at three years ago, and it's a lot easier than, than the process is right now. Um, 
uh, with the transfer portal and then the COVID seniors too and, and trying to manage and, and make sure that your roster is as strong as it can be now, but also moving in the future too. And, and uh, so there's a lot of things here as the season wraps up that you got to find out information, present information, understand where guys are at, and then make sure that uh, you're building your roster for uh, for the long haul. It's did, it's tough to manage. Did, did you, you ever know? find yourself checking to see is, is a guy a junior or a senior? Is he a fifth-year senior, sixth year? Or? We 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 know if they're a junior or a senior, and then they got the plus one on the back of it. That's kind of how how we approach it, and and uh, you know you see where where kids are at and. You know where they're at academically. Um, you know what are, where do they see them as far as their their NFL future and, and what they're trying to to get out of the process. We'll finish with Wes. <clears throat> Josh, with some of the success y'all have had with some of these guys who came from the portal, do you think that that kind of thing resonates <coughs> with, with us with other kids who might be out there this year? Do you think that's something where you can, you know, if they contact you or you're recruiting them, you can say, listen, look at. Look at what the guys did this year. Like here's just the stats. Here, here's how much they played. Yeah, I think the the brand of football that we play, the aggressive nature uh, that we play in all three phases of the game, uh, the development of young guys in our program or uh, transfers, uh, and the success that they've had, the way that they've played this year, uh, is a is a huge recruiting tool and, and something that's seen not only by transfers but also by, by young players, junior college players, high school players, and they understand um, that they're going to play an exciting brand of football, that there's going to be an unbelievable culture here inside of the building, that they're going to have a ton of fun in a really competitive environment with their teammates and coaches every single day and understand that they have an opportunity to maximize their potential as a football player and as a student athlete. Thank you, Coach.